I've been, as you know, working um, as the contracted behavior specialist for the town of Oyster Bay Animal Shelter in uh, New York on Long Island. And we had a one year moratorium on all euthanasia. So any dog we took in, other than dogs with confirmed uh, damaging bite cases that went to the health department, we had to keep um, for that year or over a year, uh, not allowed to euthanize anything unless terminally ill. Jesus. Um, there so was another Long Island shelter a few years ago that had the same thing. I think oh, really? the injunction lasted over a year. Yes. So that, you know, resulted in a large population of um, aggressive dogs being warehoused um, yep. in the kennels. Yep. And um, then I came in after the old trainer uh, left due to public um, slandering, you know, and yep. being harassed. Yep. So now I'm the town uh, behavior specialist and I had to evaluate all the dogs that were in the shelter, including some of the dogs that had been sitting there uh, for up to two years to make uh, euthanasia decisions on them, but also to try to figure out which dogs maybe are adoptable despite sitting right. there for a while. Um, right. so we have done some good stuff. Um, I had every single person that works at the animal shelter get fear-free shelter certified because wow. that was easy to do. So even the deaf people and the uh, direct, wow. every single person that does anything in the shelter took the course and got certified. Um, and then they have myself there up to 10 hours a week. And okay. my, uh, I was also able to hire a trainer, like an apprentice trainer. And wow. he's there 20 hours a week. So five days a week for four hours, she strictly works with the dogs. And because wow. we don't have a large population anymore, the adoptable dogs get one to two hours of training time per day, five days a week. And we also um, implemented enrichment feeding for all dogs. So all the dogs eat out of Kong, wow. bones and puzzle. Um, we have like a walk schedule. We have large play yards that are separated so they can't fence fight. So we try to rotate dogs that can be safely handled in and outside. Wow. The so in fact, it's a really good shelter because we have a low population yeah. and we've been able to successfully implement so many things in a short amount of time. Um, however, we had all these very aggressive dogs in our shelter. And I think because of behavioral contagion, yeah. You know, a lot of the dogs really did worse. They, a lot of the adoptable dogs did worse than they could have because they were surrounded by highly aggressive dogs. Yep. You find that that happens in shelters where you have a high population of dogs and no euthanasia. Oh, yeah. Even if you have euthanasia, still, the, the dogs who are lunging and reactive to either passing dogs and or to passing humans, that behavior is absolutely contagious. Yes. It's, yeah. yeah. There was a study done, I think, at least a decade ago at some Australian shelters. And they, they, um, I can't remember it exactly, but it, they, they uh, asked people and, and um, adopters, pet owning public, who walked through and they only saw the aggression. They didn't see the good dogs in between if there's a lot of, you know, lunging, barking, reactivity. Yes. Because nobody, I mean, nobody really wants to go to a shelter where, yeah, where you're like that too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and then because our population is so small, there's not like tons and tons of dogs to choose from. I think that that mm. further keeps general public away because why would you go to our shelter? All we have are aggressive yes. dogs, but maybe one nice dog if you're lucky, right? Um, so that was happening too. But yeah. so right now we have a situation in which. We did euthanize several aggressive dogs, and um, you've seen some of the videos already, but uh, we could go over them together. And That'd be great. We had a few that we euthanized, um, mm -hmm. and then we have one dog in particular who is unable to be shown to the public because she has some strange behaviors that are aggressive, um, and she's also killed a cat at the shelter and injured another dog through a fence. Mm. Uh, and she's severely predatory towards other dogs. Oh. 
So she, we would have euthanized because she um, doesn't fit our behavioral criteria for adoption yeah. because she's dangerous yeah. to other animals. But we had um, some court papers. There's like a court legal thing going on where basically a trust was created for her to try to seize her from the animal shelter to place her um, in an animal rescue situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that dog now is sitting in limbo and she's been in our shelter for over two years. Okay. That was mm, hard to place dogs like that in um, rescue or sanctuary. You have to be really careful because aggression to other animals means she's going to be really limited in terms of walks and getting out because she's a high risk. So what kind of sanctuary would you place a dog like that in? She Personally, also has open latches. Um, so she has um, opened gates, like with her nose, when you least expect it, like blow past you, see that the gate doesn't have a clip and then knock the gate up and go. Um, and she also, and she's done it to me and I'm a decent handler. Right. She will knock you out of the way to get out of a door. So you might, when you least expect it, you'll be like wow. in the kennel door, ready to loop her and she'll, throw all of her weight against the door to knock you back to get out. And she had done it to two different staff members. And, but then she did it to me and she really blindsided me with it. And then she does, will not be caught, runs around, tries to open doors. Wow. So that means that management will be, um, successful management will be near impossible. So any kind of management anyway, usually has at least one event. So you always have to, as you know, assess um, the risk that would happen when an event occurs. Yes. But when you have a dog who's an escape artist like that, and one who uses 100% of her physical strength uh, against a human, suddenly um, you've got an, a huge increased risk of um, an event. So in terms of management will not be successful. And, yeah. you know, it's really tricky. I, I don't, I think, personally, I, I, I don't know really any sanctuaries where you can give true quality of life to a dog that's that predatory and animal aggressive. Because it's like saying, well, you know, here's Hannibal Lecter's retirement village. And, you know, don't worry, his door is locked and that he's only going to go into his yard or to get his mail at the end of the driveway. But it's like, if you know that Hannibal Lecter's in your neighborhood and living next door to you, you don't feel safe, especially if he's, you know, on the other side of the fence threatening you and threatening your kids and whatever. So, yeah. 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 And I think the, the animal rescue that was trying, was planning on trying to take her, um, ha is about 2,000 square feet of living space for the animals, mostly indoors. And they have between 110 and 150 animals in that space. Um, oh. Mostly cats, but, you know, quite a few dogs too. So then this, it's like, like an indoor space? Yeah, like a, an indoor space. And it's what would the, what, what kind of space does a dog like that need? to thrive and then like how many staff paid staff does there need to be for a dog like that to be in a, a fair situation yeah well not even just a dog like that i mean when for any dog yeah when we hold dogs um we are responsible for their quality of life and so i mean to me and uh, an indoor only facility or leash walks only or um, with, oh my God, can you imagine how frustrating it's going to be for her if there's all these cats around and usually indoor, large indoor spaces with lots of animals is a cacophony of noises and arousal and stimulation and frustration, especially for a dog like you're describing. So I'm, uh, I'm quality of life for me is paramount. Um, and I, I think we have to speak for the animals that were making these decisions. Um, if, she, if, you're, if you guys are thinking of sending her away to somewhere or someone to take care of, somebody's got to visit, surprise visit, um, be able to see every part of the sanctuary and, and you know, ask themselves, would you put your own dog in that facility for the next 10 years or till she dies naturally? 
Um, but I, I don't know how quality of life for me, like if you said, okay, well, it's 2000 square feet of a small indoor cabin with somebody living there on the premises with a secure fenced in yard so that, cause she can't really go for walks. It's not, it's not safe, right? But um, with a caretaker who loves her cause dogs still need companionship. Um, and if 2000 square feet was one person, one yard, um, indoor, outdoor, nature outside, I'd be like, oh, well maybe if, you know, if every, if every dog there really had a person and nature and a really secure situation with low stimulation, I've never seen a sanctuary that does that. No one would have the money to do that. Um, and again, most sanctuaries are, are fraught with problems because they fill up almost within a few months, if not faster. And then the person who runs the sanctuary has to be able to say no. Like with 2,000 square feet, what, what's their capacity? When did they reach it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So with this dog, I, I mean, she would need a low stimulation environment so she's not extremely frustrated by watching other dogs and nice. cats walk yeah. around. Do you think even if she can't see those animals, the smell and the sound of them is frustrating for them? Yeah, I mean, the... Yes, any kind of stimulation puts her cortisol up. And yeah. so I don't know. I mean, has anyone actually gone to see this particular sanctuary? Do you have photos or videos of it? No, just what we could see on Facebook. And they were not even registered legally in the state of New York until a week or two ago. So they were not operating legally um, within yeah. you know, our state law. I mean, at first, I don't believe... A shelter dog can be sent to a sanctuary without someone from that shelter who's responsible for the dog doing a surprise on-site visit. And um, and again, you know, take photos, videotape. I'm I'm going to guess that this dog. What is this dog's name that we're talking about? Her name's Ruby. Ruby, but that her needs will not be met at a two thousand square foot facility with lots of dogs and lots of cats. I don't know what facility could handle her. Um, How about such a where they have a dog like, um, they have uh, individual high fencing and the dogs are in, I don't know, 400 square feet, a pen with um, like a little shed or something that they can go in and out of, but very little human contact. Not humane either. No, I mean, I'm assuming she's sociable to people or has some connection with people. I mean, a little bit. No, okay. Even so, they're not livestock. Yeah. So, no, I doubt you, we can't just keep them alive. You know, sorry, I get, you know, but we, I don't think we can keep them alive for the sake of keeping them alive and then compromise on, yeah. you know, conditions and social interactions no matter who they are, no matter how aggressive, no matter how predatory, they're still dogs, you know? Yeah, they're, um, they're not the same as horses or... Cows. Cows, ducks. That Even are happy together yeah. Themselves. Right. How many hours a day do you think, how many man hours per day do you think a dog in a sanctuary require to have their needs fulfilled? Um... It's a weird question, but I, I've been to some places where the dogs literally, if you do the math, a, a person spends 10 to 15 minutes a day total with that dog, and that includes cleaning and feeding. So my, um, when I set out humane guidelines for dogs in shelters, I have two separate ones. So in a lot of facilities, um, we are mandated by the courts or, you know, like it's a legal case or a cruelty case or a... Um, and we have to hold hold a dog for a particular amount of time, and even then, um, I, I you know, I I understand that if the dog has killed someone and it gets uh, uh, impounded and has to stay, we we can't obviously take that dog out or spend that much time with the dog. But when we're making the the deliberate decision to keep a dog alive because of a policy or politics or whatever. I think 
then we cannot accept the bare minimal. And I don't know what the bare minimum is. I mean, think about your own dogs at home. Would you, would you say, yeah, 15 minutes total is fine? Mm, no way. And so when you know, we're making this huge responsible decision to keep a dog alive, um, the dog, first of all, I think the dog needs, if he's indoors only, he needs to get out every day. If he's outdoors only in New York, gee, that's cold. That's cold. That's hot. I mean, I don't know. Do you got, you know, do you adopt out to people who say they're going to just keep their dog outside? No. no. Yeah. Do you keep, do you adopt out to people who say they're only going to keep their dog inside? Not that it's ever happened. I'm sure. I think we would, if we had somebody that adopted like a tiny chihuahua, Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. You have some people that are like that. They live in an apartment and they right. don't really go out much. Okay. Um, Not for a big dog though. That's what I'm no. thinking. I mean, what we've seen is that now that we have myself and then the, uh, the trainer, um, the dogs really are thriving with that two hours a day of a one-on-one -on -one with a person, whether yeah. she, she's my sister, whether she, um, takes them on a walk and then sits with them in a room, right. does some training, even if she just sits, yes, like hangs out with them on a bench while they're outside just to have somebody sit with them. Or sometimes she'll go in a room and the dog just wants to sleep in the room and hang, sleep next yes. to her. But that two hours a day of daily work um, has really helped. We had one dog that was a long-term dog. She had lived in the shelter for two years. She had some resource guarding, but not crazy. We, huh? We put her on Prozac and then we upped the Prozac and then she started to do really, really well. We got completely rid of all of her kennel aggression to the point that oh. she was friendly and happy when people would come up. I mean, we have the luxury to do that because we had so right. many adoptable dogs and then she was just adopted, uh, you know, this week, but able to excitedly meet people now, like completely wow. different. But it wouldn't have happened without that personal intense intensive yeah, yeah. Without, without the experience of a person treating her like they would their own pet you know right yes and what's important about that is it we we tend to think of shelter dogs and when we can spend time with them we think of what can we do and sometimes just being with them like the hardest thing for a shelter dog is to calm down is to have peace and quiet you know when you live in a pack of dogs in a kennel situation, even in the nicest one, it's loud, it's noisy. If you have one reactive dog who listens to noises at night and barks, everyone wakes up. And sleep is just as important for dogs as it is for people as a restorative. Oh, yes. So I love the fact that the, there's two hours, one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of it calming um, and just being with the dog. That's so important. Yes, definitely. Um, and you know, the results are amazing. So. I have some videos of Ruby. Okay, so we'll start with uh, Ruby. So uh, these are from today, and we started with uh, the cage, you know, walking up to the cage. So here's that. Sorry about my bird that's yelling in the background. Here I figured go. it was a bird I was going to ask you. Yeah, a small parrot. Okay, so can you see it okay? Yes. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go up. Nothing crazy there, right? Right. Yeah. Except the first thing I notice is she's really large. She's really muscular um, and athletic. And uh, that um, matters, right? Because um, size matters when you have predation and dog-to-dog -dog aggression. And it also matters, like, if she decides to bolt past somebody and try to open a latch, she has the power to get the job done. And so it increases the risk. So yeah. anyway, keep going. That was just my She is first. the strongest dog we have and she lunges yeah. really hard on the leash. Um, I actually caught my finger, you can't really see, but it like gouged Oof. my finger on this, a corner because she Oof. tried to get away around a corner and my hand went like right into a piece of metal. Like she tries actively right. um, to lunge away, like very right. easily. Okay, and then, uh, Oh, here we did standing against a wall for 60 seconds. Okay, great.
so that she did a little nose bop on the leash with her, she touched it. That's often a dog who's wanting off the leash, a tiny red flag for that. And she has so far, you know, no sociability, which increases the frustration for a dog wanting to be by the person. So yeah. that increases the risk of escape behaviors. But I mean, it's early on, maybe she'll show more sociability. What keeps you her head. Yeah, go ahead. The, that, um, the yawning that she keeps doing. Um, well, I know like in the dog world, there's schools of thought. It's a stress a sign of stress. It's a calming signal. I think it's a frustration and I can't see, but um, it could be um, if she's yawning and showing her teeth, that's usually a, like a micro expression of frustration. Yeah. I don't believe that these are calming signals. I don't, I think that she's frustrated and. And stressed. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make it the screen bigger. Let's see. Oh, okay. Better. There we go. Good. Yeah. Ooh. She held space and hold it, freeze it there for a second. So yeah, she held space and wow, um, kept her head up high and did a little hard stare during, I think it was the second stroke or first stroke maybe. And then right now she's reoriented frontally and aligned. So yeah. these are some not great red flags. And then she did proceed to sniff my shoes a bunch, uh, which she had plenty of time to sniff my shoes because I didn't right. take the bathroom before we walked in the room. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's that one. Okay. Next yeah. we have see the, the setting, the wall. By the way, your technique is really good. Oh, thank you. Probably some of the best I've seen. So, oh, thank you. yeah, nice job. Thanks. Uh, oh, this one is us putting a toy down. We couldn't find a toy. We're, our shelter is under res renovation. Yeah. And we wanted to get it done, so we just grabbed something we found. Um, this is, oh, this is actually a two second video that we don't need. Whoops. Okay. Oh, I do that all the time. Uh, We'll get rid of it so we and don't see it again. Did you, did you sit in a chair? Is that sit in a chair in 20 yeah. seconds of a, can, I'd love to see that. This is sit in a chair, okay. Right. Yeah. That's called a lunge away. Lunge aways. Shoulder swipe, shake off. Shoulder swipe. Girl, good girl. Good girl, Ruby. Good girl, Ruby. Lunge away. Yeah. So these are all red flag behaviors, zero sociability. She's showing some guarding, um, micro behaviors, this shoulder swiping, the scent marking. Yes. Um, okay. Mm, not, 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 not great. Yeah. Not good. Okay. Let's see. What is this one? Well, we'll find out. Okay. Orient yourself so that the dog is at your side, facing the same direction you are. If you are right-handed, have the dog on your left side. If you are left-handed, have the dog on your right side. Gather the leash that's almost completely gathered and place it in your dominant hand. Reach with the other hand that has a gathered leash to the dog's chin. Keep your palm as flat as possible as you are not trying to hook the dog, but rather attempting to gently come on this dog's muscle and guide his head towards you. This blew my mind for a second, but then I figured it out. So. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to be hard to do because the minute you release tension on the leash, she's probably going to, bolt, you know, bolt away. As soon as your hand reaches the dog chin, reach two fingers and thumb of your free hand towards the top of the dog's muzzle just mm -hmm. behind the nose. Your fingers should not make contact with the dog lightly and down. Nice. If you are reaching, as you are reaching for a teacup during oh, that's a. That's a really low threshold. Oh, it should make yeah. contact with the dog. I made um, the other people very The hand under the dog's chin. Yeah. And this part of the test is, and there she frontally faced, you know, threatened you. Um, and the spikes in arousal. Yeah. Um, yeah. The teeth exam is. Yeah. 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 Ye
pulling away or simply turning her head. She like got really stiff there, and then I got a little bit. Arm. Yeah, good. So, so the, the teeth exam is a test to see what their threshold is for being made to do something they don't want to do. So the, while people in the home don't do a teeth exam, um, people get bitten by moving the dog off the couch or holding the dog by the collar while they let you know, the kids out of the door or whatever. And so that's the threshold we're looking for here. We're looking for frustration tolerance, handling to tolerance, and tolerance to being made to annoyance, basically. Yes. So in other words, we, it's the same thing we look for in people, the ability to be annoyed um, without getting violent, right? Which is a, is a skill that all, all animals can have. So her threshold is extremely low. Um, and so was her um, threshold for the three strokes. So she has zero sociability and she um, has two very low thresholds so far. We know also, I guess, that she's got dog to dog issues, but let's keep going. So uh, this is our toy, which isn't the best toy. Oh, that's not the toy, that's weird. Oh, it's- Yeah, it's resource garden. Oh, there we go, yep. So there's- Okay, here's toy. Yep, here's toy. Take a cloth toy in one hand and gather it to leaf with the other hand, allowing about three feet flat. Mm. And taking the dog with the toy by dragging it on the floor in front of the dog just out of reach. Yep. Circle, turning in a circle in the direction of the hand with the toy. Can we do that? Now, after at least one rotation, toss the toy about four or five feet away and get the dog's back to go after the toy. Okay, now, um, step two. Give the dog a few seconds to become interested in the toy, and by letting the dog have the toy in your hand until he settles down on the toy. Yep. Hold the SSA hand behind your back so the dog can see it before you use it. Take one deliberate step toward the toy with one foot, then bring the other foot flush and stand neutrally. End up approximately 12 inches from the toy. With one AAH, put the dog along the back and breathe gently. Pause, stand back, and set the dog gently on the head with the AAH and put it gently. Pause, stand back up, and then bring the AAH slowly down to the dog's mouth on the toy. And when within an inch of the toy, draw back suddenly as it continues. There's the that dog. leash bop again. Right. Repeat this for the third one. Finally, bring the AAH all the way to the side of the dog's mouth. You should go do it three times. Gently applying steady pressure to push the dog's muscle away from the toy. Continue applying pressure for a few seconds and stop. Repeat once more for a total of two times. Hmm. This is resource guarding for such a the toy. And again, there's a frontal reorientation. Um, she squared off. Yeah. Direct threat. Yeah, so she doesn't actively growl or right. um, snap at you, but there's like some threat behaviors that make everybody in the room very nervous. Yes, the thing is she has, she's not fearful. So we're so used to dogs who are a little conflicted yeah. or fearful, you know, and then you get the more overt signs, the whale eye, the freezing, the, um, the you know, grabbing. This girl is just pure um she's confident there's no doubt in her mind that she's not going to lose the toy and if you get it it's because she didn't care if you had it or not yeah so you know these are the rare dogs um but man she's showing um she's showing all the other signs of aggression risk and serious aggression risk I should mention that she was found uh, roaming loose in a neighborhood, and the person that found her was walking two French bulldogs. She ran up to them. She started attacking them. She didn't oh. hurt them, and they were able to get her, and then they brought her home, kept her in the yard for the night, and then brought her to animal control in the morning, um, and she had a severe, severe pyometra. Wow. that needed um, attention. And so when she arrived at the animal shelter, she was very lethargic and calm. Yeah. So I wonder if she hadn't been gravely ill with a high fever, if she would have, you know, been more aggressive towards those. I was, that was exactly my thought. I was like, oh my God. So she had a pyometra and she still attacked two dogs and there wasn't even an owner around. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, a bad plan such... for us. Wow. Okay. And she also was young, so she wasn't over the oh. age of one at that point. Now she's been in the shelter for about two years. Okay. Yeah. So here we have uh, some kind of resource guarding. Again, there's this squared off frontal, right? She's not just sitting, she's in that position of power. And has she been adopted and returned, or has she ever had anyone interested in her? No. Again, head high, looks you right in the eye. These are just the subtle threats. She's just saying, you know, I've got a gun, I might use it, but um, I feel no need to take it out. The, her level of confidence is uncommon and interesting. I know. It looked like it, but I was like trying to really show yeah. that. Again, your technique, your really, your technique's superb. Oh, thank she's, you. Um, yeah, she's what I, I know we, we have more footage, but she, I call her a predator. So she has n none of the qualities of a pet dog, of a domesticated dog. In other words, there's no sociability, no deference to people. She doesn't look for clues. She doesn't check in with people. She's completely on her own and yeah. independent. So it makes total sense that she's running loose and attacking dogs, just in, you know, not feeling well. But she's um, she's a serious, serious dog. Yes. Oh yeah. And um, this is the stranger test. Um, she has met the girl that's coming in a few times, yeah. but she, the girl that's coming in has never pet her or handled her in any way. So. Okay. Hello, somebody there? Who is it? Hello? Okay. Yeah, she All keeps right. her head really high. She's taking space. Um, she's really confident. Ooh. Frontal, aligned. Head forward, pushing in space, and she did a little of a, a bit of an anal swipe. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, she does that frequently. Okay, let's see. So that was the stranger test. When you do your stranger tests in the future, make sure the stranger doesn't get that close. Okay. Just because if this, you know, it's too risky. Okay. Although, if you are going to place place the dog up for adoption, then um, at, because all the tests, the dog is showing that, you know, he or she would make a good pet, then you should redo a stranger test with a stranger and they should be able to come within range. But, but you don't want to keep risking people with dogs like this. Okay. Um, so it's perfectly valid, even if she did not get that close and she was yeah. striking distance. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It would, yeah. So keep it safe. food test. Okay. With her, with Ruby, I was confident that she was not going to take a shot um, at her, but yes. I also didn't realize that she could be farther away for the test to be valid. Yes, yeah, she can. Yeah, so I would have preferred that. Yeah, me too. 
So the red flags that she shows for all of her resources is a behavior I call look from the resource up to the tester or closest competitor and then back down to the resource. And when they, there's a little freeze there, when they drop their heads back down, it's much quicker than when they had come up. Um, and there's a shoulder block. And it's not really the kind of dog, like her tail's not tucked. Reshifting frontally. It's her middle name. Eating out of the bowl in a blocking position. There's another shoulder block. There's a freeze. You're not going to get displays out of this dog. I think that is. This is um. This is uh, the kind of dog that can, um, quote unquote, look like she'll pass an assessment, particularly some of the other assessment procedures that are out there. And especially if you're not looking at sociability or lack of sociability, but this is a, a really dangerous dog. Um, yeah. And not, I mean, if she ended up loose, she's going to kill another dog. Absolutely. I look, at, I look at that dog and I'm like, I do not want that dog in my neighborhood next door to me. I don't want to meet her on the streets. She will get loose. She pulls that hard. And uh, she's... I mean, to me, it's upsetting that she's in the animal shelter because if my dog got lost in that town, my dog would end up at that shelter. And if that dog got loose, yep. my dog is walking through the door or that dog got loose when my dog is, you know, being led through the kennel, my dog would lose its life. And it's yep. just not fair. No, There's because this, she's, she's what I call a habituated predator. In other words, everyone looks at her and says, oh, um, um, that's a dog, but she's not a dog. She has no sociability to people. Um, she's missing the components. Her aggression thresholds are so low. Um, and high predation. Ugh. Yeah, she. There'll be nothing stopping her if and when she actually gets another dog or goes for a person, and yeah. she she would. This is um, a dog test with a stuffed dog. So we've already walked a real dog out. Okay. Um, and in and then walked the fake dog. Now he's coming out. Okay. And uh, she's loose in this one, which I know we're not supposed to do, but we wanted to show that this dog, if she got out of a house, will run great yeah. distances to attack uh, yeah. a dog or a child okay. or she's going for. So yeah. This is kind of the thing that she likes to do if she sees another uh, pet. So I'm in the corner petting the dog and hanging yep. with it. And now here she goes. Like, and she immediately grabbed it. Yeah. And then she doesn't, you know, she does not let go. Right. It's the classic. Yeah. And is she's ripping the dog? Yeah, this is a Melissa Doug dog. We've had, it, it's a very strong dog. And then she just disengages and walks around and sniffs and feeds. Yeah, that is, I see that and uh, I've seen it in other dogs. It's so scary. I don't know why that's more uh, disturbing. It, um, I think there's a, there's a casualness to the aggression 
But I mean, I know people would argue that that level of predation isn't really aggression. This is like this, she's a, a fighting stock pit, you know, that level of ignite at the sight of another dog, grab, full mouth bite, head shake, not let go. Um, you know, that's not rehabilitatable. And she's, you know. Well, and oh. the people that are trying to fight to take her. Do you want me to stop? They Keep like going. to say <laughs> like that she, um, that she could be rehabilitated, she could be fixed. This is because of our shelter, because she spent so much time at our shelter. This is because she hasn't been getting enough stimulation. And they also said that she's just trying to play with this toy. Yeah, I, that's, I know that that's a usual. Um, and the thing is, in a lot of these bull breeds that attack other dogs, they, it, it, they aren't angry. It isn't about status. They're not dog aggressive in the traditional sense. And so it almost doesn't matter if she thinks it's, it's a toy because the woman walking her 10-year-old Maltese, she'll think that's a toy too, and she will kill it. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't matter. I mean, the, using a stuffed dog in an assessment has a lot of science validating the, the use of it um, here and in, I think it's Holland as well. Um, but so, there's no, like, you know. Go ahead. So a lot, of, um, a lot of people, you know, they quote these research studies that say that the, that the dog on dog test is not valid. But when I've, I've read the research papers, um, they seem to be valid for possibly for dogs that show this type of aggression. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yes. you can't have, you can't say that in the studies, I mean, I'm sure you know, but you have, um, let's say you have a dog like Ruby that does this level of attack on the stuffed dog. Yeah. You're never going to have agreement with the real dog because you're never going to let it get to that point. So of course right. there's going to be no, there's not going to be a correlation because you don't mm -hmm. have, you can't let her do that to a real dog. So when right. I was doing the research, I was like, I don't see how this is not valid because we never let it get to the, that. We didn't test you it. You can't. You can't. That's the whole problem with validating assessments to the, you know, to um, to a point where people can say, you know, oh look, but you do. Like she attacked the two French bulldogs with a fever and pot, raging pyometra. I mean, that's an in, that's insanity. That's biological suicide. Yes. You don't even think of going after a dog off territory um, and just attacking one while you have a fever, while you have a raging infection. You don't do that unless you're extremely uh, a dog killer. Um, I mean, yeah. So this is a real dog. Whose dog is this? This is um, a resident dog uh, that has, he's just old. He had, he's dog social and he's not afraid of her or anything. He's trying to pee all over the place. Yeah. Um, and she has a very secure muzzle on. Yep. Can you hear her whining? Uh-huh, I can. Or that was a lunge away. Uh, so she did a circle turn. I mean, the only thing holding her back is a leash and leashes will fail. And the only thing holding her back is a human and humans fail. Like, you know, uh, even just transporting her is a huge risk. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a very confident handler of a dog like this. A regular person would have been blindsided by that lunge away. Right, and right. And even loose or grabbing. Um, yeah. And, and she was also deceptive because she kind of was like walking by him and then she lunges at him again. And I know right. how long, you know, in my mind, I know how long the leash is. There's not a chance she's going to touch that dog when I have right. the leash. Um, you know, we only did this to illustrate. Right, I get it. But this, is yes. a, this dog is like doing his own thing. He's deaf. He doesn't really care. He's completely non-aggressive. Yeah, she thinks he's a toy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the the her behaviors her motor patterns like um she'll strain and hurl herself to the end of the leash and then she stops and takes the she circles so that there's no tension on the leash and then she suddenly goes this is 
a formula for yeah. escape um, and getting loose. And the thing is, um, this isn't curable. <laughs> you know, no. you can't change. This is hundreds of years of genetics in this dog. She is a fighting stock um, bull breed. Well, oh. they like to say too, she can go to an only pet household. No, she needs, she, can, she needs to go to another planet because even if she doesn't live with a pet, the person will transport her. She's going to be walked. She's going to escape from a yard. She's going to bust out a front door. Every dog has. And she cannot be in the community. Like this is our responsibility as an animal, um, as an animal shelter is for the community. We cannot place dogs into the community that are going to hurt or kill dogs that are going to hurt or kill children because this level of arousal and predation absolutely will transmit to children as well. She has no sociability and she has no off switch. She has no deference, um, no, um, there's no social gestures. There's no social communication. She is on her own. Um, she also does this very interesting behavior. Um, and she did it to me when I was alone with her in a yard. And I knew that she did it because the director told me that she did it to her. Mm. She feared for her life, but that it was fine and she was able to get her off of her. Um, but she will look at you and come at you and hump you, like grab you and not let go in a way that I've never seen any dog do. Like she latches on. He heavy clasping. Insane. Like, like latches right. on and you're like trying to drag yourself out of the yard or push her or give her food, like anything to make her stop. And she has her face up against your body and she doesn't let go. She actually ripped through my jeans with her nails and gave me a scar from her nails from grabbing me like that. Um, and she, I, how would you adopt, how would you show this dog to an adopter? You know, and yeah. uh, it's dangerous. And it also it, that behavior the, the animal uh, advocates, as they call themselves, they said that that's a training issue, that she's just never been taught, that she's just a puppy. She doesn't understand. But I've never seen right. a dog clasp onto somebody with that level of intensity where you, right. I, we thought she was going, I thought she was going to start attacking me. Right. And it, that's because it's an act of, um, of, it's a resource guarding. She's grabbing you as her property. There's, um, it, I, was, I was interviewed for a podcast early this morning with uh, Mike Chicascio, and we were talking about just this. We were talking about the clasping with the nails, sh shredding clothes, grabbing, and um, it's such dangerous behavior. It's so beyond dangerous. Um, she, this, it, would, it would be so irresponsible to have this dog in uh, in any any place um, where she could get loose and she will get loose. Like the risk of a management error is so high. It's just not fair and it's not fair for her. She's like, wasn't born for this world. Some of the problems that she has, her temperament is that it's like, you know, you're trying to get a black bear and find a, an appropriate home, except you it would be an aroused black bear. Yes. Um, so she's, this is such like dangerous behavior. A predator in a zoo. Yes, she's, she is a habituated one. Like if you walk down the street with a black bear, children and people aren't going to run, you know, run up to her and give her a hug. You walk down the street with a big red dog, people are going to think, oh, that's, you know, I love pit bulls or bull breeds or whatever. Yeah. Um, or even a friendly dog might risk miss, a friendly dog might misread this dog and come up to her because she yes. gets, she just right. doesn't act like a dog that's trying to communicate something with another dog. I've never she's, seen her communicate with another dog. She doesn't, she doesn't communicate. She no. does. It's one-sided. Yeah. Oi, so oi. We do an impromptu baby doll test. It's not okay. a best doll. They tell me it's about like a preemie size and it cries. Yeah, I know the doll. And I, mean, I, got, I got nervous. Um, with the doll, so I did kind of hold, I didn't hold the doll as if it was my living child, because I would have been a little more, you know, protective of a real, yes. 
yes. you held the child also as a shield, I'm going to guess. Yes. Yeah. It's fine. She sees it. Oi. She does the same Oi. back and forth thing that she does with other dogs. <laughs> yeah. See how red her eyes are? Yeah, she's so aroused. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to find, I didn't uh, airdrop yeah. it to this computer, yeah. but I think you've seen it um, already. I had a video of her playing with a ball. Well, with me doing this test with a ball, like a big soccer ball, and yeah. the result is so different than with this crying toy. She doesn't have this kind of... Um, Predation. She doesn't have it with toys at all. It's right. Very, it's a different response. It's a totally different uh, response. Um, right. You know, I my, my baby doll test, I know, was not really the best one, but... Uh, it... I, it um, I mean, I think... The, um, I just, I imagine, so she gets uh, immediately frustrated um, behind the fence, on a leash, whatever. Uh, she's, the, all the classic signs of um, kill first, get stimulated and kill first. And it doesn't, it does not, she has no sociability to humans, none to dogs either. So it won't matter to her whether somebody picks up their Pomeranian or their Sheltie into their arms, or has a toddler or a baby. Um, it will elicit the same response. This is such a dangerous dog. These are the types of dogs that we have to be the ones to be responsible for not putting back into the community. And I would say that includes, you know, a sanctuary. Um, any sanctuary that, or rescue, that understands dog behavior, which you should have a minimal um, knowledge of dog behavior to be able to take on this dog and handle this dog. Um, and the um, places trying to take her do not have any kind of behavioral certification, no formal training, nothing. Um, and in fact, the legal document states that they would be able to adopt her out at such a time that they felt that she was able to be adopted out. Uh, I mean, so this is me with a ball. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see how she's not pacing the fence? She oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Low arousal. Ooh. So I was looking for that baby doll, which I threw over the fence, but it's no longer there. That way we just like um, Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you make what? of that? Like such attraction to a baby or a, a human figure, but nothing to a toy. Yes, I see it in the most dangerous dogs. I see it time and time again. Um, so I did use uh, a, like a my size dolly as a shield here. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so this is a bigger dog. The animal advocates made the argument that because I'm using a fake doll, not a real doll, that <laughs> we have no idea that she would be bad with kids. She may be good with children. No, she's not going to be good with... Look at the level of arousal when she sees this doll. You got to let her out, right? Around. 
Oh. 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 Those are like, you know, carotid artery yeah. orientations. And this isn't what she does with toys, like this running no. around the trail thing. Or... Right. Because, oh God, it, the combination of the resource guarding, so she, you know, stays away. Oh my God, this is so scary. And so I wish it were less common these days, but it's not. I'm seeing more and more of it in the past five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yep, like, me I too. It. Um, it's really sad. Yeah, so, these are the last, these are the dogs in some communities um, who people are still breeding. These are the dogs still being bred. So, and we're sterilizing all the best ones. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, I went to pick up a puppy at my a breeder uh, this week in uh, Oregon. And, you know, I met all the relatives, 12 dogs, and then the litter of puppies. And it's funny when you work with dogs like this all the time, and then you're around a bunch of friendly, sociable, highly sociable, um, yes. normal dogs, Yeah. how they don't show any of these behaviors at all. And you're totally right. comfortable, and it's just friendly dog after friendly dog, or right. any of them. I mean, they're working dogs, so they couldn't go to anybody, but... Right. You, they'd be fine with little kids. You would trust them, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. And then you see this, which is what's going to be in people's homes. And it's right. really devastating. And, and in many shelters, this is all they see. So they never, you know, um, they never see what, what I would call a normal pet dog. They have, it's been in some shelters years since they've seen sociability to humans and, yeah. um, and sociability to dogs in the truest sense of the word. Um, they don't, recognize that oh, it's missing we saw this one um, yep we had one more actually oh this one so this is her with a bigger dog um, here we go. all right now we wait sorry all right now we wait Yeah. They're both so inappropriate. I'm sorry if the gray, the blue pit bull belongs to somebody, but this is who dogs are today, right? Hanging off the end of the leash, absolutely no sensitivity to having their necks yanked at and they have no communication skills with other dogs. They just launch themselves at other dogs. Yeah. And um, the uh, gray pit bull was an owner surrender. She does have some issues too. She wasn't mm -hmm. be adopted out. Um, she's from a pet store and is a purebred American Staffordshire Terrier. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Wow. I mean, uh, so we did this just, you know, to, to see what she would do uh, with a real dog, but not a little dog, a big dog. Yeah. So I think we're seeing predatory behavior to just dogs in general, doesn't matter, big, small, yep. female. Uh, yep. So it wasn't the same as with a small dog, I felt, but it was still. It's still there. It's still she's there. looking to mix it up. And she's also, I mean, a big dog that wasn't a, um, that wasn't a pit bull would be, you know, different. Would the, the amount of arousal and non-communication doesn't, you know, would both dogs have um, lack that. And so neither dog they're just not, oh, I'm not being articulate, but they're not, um, this is what we're used to now, but these are not normal dogs. Yeah. Let's see. So I think that was, um, that's pretty much it for the Ruby. Okay. So yes, this is a dog that we would have euthanized, um, both because it's inhumane to keep her alive. Like I would that. agree. Yeah. Uh, 
two years. I mean, two years in a kennel run. And at this point, she's unsafe to be really taken out of that run right. without like multiple people there, making sure all the doors are locked. It's, um, she has pressure sores from being on concrete. Oh. Um, and we feel very uncomfortable with the idea of her going to be yeah. adopted out or to an animal sanctuary, and I use that term loosely, where she would be around other animals or just be caged. Yeah. For, um, so she, I, we don't feel that she is an adoptable no. dog. No, absolutely not. Sorry, absolutely not. And anyone who knows dogs would not, um, would not take her on. First of all, you can't have her in a facility while, you know, where, because being in a, in, a, in a place with other dogs and cats, she's just going to be practicing. So, you know, you can't train this out of her anyway. But even so, even if, even if you could, you can't do that in this environment. So she would need a personal home environment. Yes. And she's going to kill dogs and get loose and not, you know, I'm telling you, knowing what you guys know of her and all of your assessments, knowing that this is a predator, a dangerous animal who will kill another dog when she gets loose. That is absolutely a safe assessment. And in all likelihood, she will kill a child if the circumstances are right. Um, it is completely irresponsible to have her go back out into the community or send her somewhere else to avoid euthanasia. Yes. Um, and we, our town actually is, you know, has a legal team on it because uh, good. our town and good. our supervisor believe that we need to keep the general public as well as people's pets yes. safe. It's not fair that I, you know, my dogs could be killed because this dog belongs to my neighbor. Right, um, right. Or that your neighbor or somebody on your block is fostering her for a rescue group who doesn't know animal behavior. Yes. Um, so she actually did fight with the dog that I'm going to show you next uh, oh. through a fence when she escaped, and they fought with each oh, other through the fence. God. Uh, and she was able to do this damage through a fence. This oh. dog grabbed her foot and bit her on the foot. But she did this oh. dog. Um, her name is Precious. We euthanized her about two to three weeks ago. Um, she's been in and out of shelters, we think, for her whole life. Um, oh. She was in our shelter for over a year. And oh. the argument is that any dog will fight through a fence. Any dog would do this. That we shouldn't negatively score a, a dog that does this. What do you Oh, my God. Ab, ab, this, no. Um, the, this is what happens. Like when people only see, you know, fighting stock guarding breeds and mixes in the shelters who have such dog aggression and such arousal and frustration problems then this becomes normal. This is not normal. This is not what dogs do. Dogs will fence fight, and, and, and some dogs will fence fight. A normal pet dog will fence fight, and there's no contact. Yeah. It's all like, rah, 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 all, all display to grab. You can see every incisor tooth and the canines. Okay, we should probably pull it back up again because I got rid of it so fast. It's just disturbing to see because- It's I so unfair that. to either dog. I mean, I know that, um, you know, the dog who got bit, she did fight at the fence. She was in a very large yard. She was in a yard that is, you know, huge, um, hundreds of feet long and 50 feet wide or more. And she could have gone anywhere. She did not have to fight right. at the fence, but she chose to, to fight this dog through the fence. Um, Can you see all the incisor marks on the bottom? nostrils there those are incisors and then the top has a canine rip i mean this is just um oh it's so awful Ugh. Ugh. so can you imagine uh these dogs being your neighbor and if your dog innocently stuck its face under the fence or up to the fence what would happen or even if you're walking this dog on the street and she sticks her face near chain link or under you know yeah. stockade it's the, um, the case in Utah, in my home state, of the two Siberians next door neighbors, and they went under the plastic stockade fence to grab the five-year-old boy, and in one, one bite, amputated his hand. And people 
were saying, oh, well, he thought, you know, he thought the, you know, the kid was a toy. And it's like, dogs don't even do that with toys. But to sever a hand, like this level of bite pressure, grab hold, bite, shake is, it's so um, monstrous. It's monstrous. And it is not normal dog behavior. And we also have to look at it like when, when these are your, this is your genetics, this dog and Ruby, these are the genetics. They don't belong. There is no place where they can, um, where they're able to be um, with access to their instincts because they're not bred as dogs. There's no way to fulfill them. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a cruelty to yeah. keep them alive there's no way to provide the enrichment that they would really need in a safe way and 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 not humanely for anyone around them and this is precious who we euthanize okay this one shows like over significant portions of the day the stereotypic kind of pacing i have a dog kind of near the fence and she uh, is 12 or 13 years old and just slams herself up against the this is a cruelty. This is a cruelty to animals. Cross the line. Um, I call. I call this a behavioral emergency. I mean, I'm, I know she's already euthanized, but stereotypical behaviors are the sign that the dog has lost quality of life. And the studies from the zoo community is the brain rewires. So she's rewiring, forming new neural pathways in this. Um, this is a response to an abnormal environment. This is a cruelty to animals. There's not a person who would go to a zoo and watch a, a, you know, a gorilla doing this or a, or a wolf pacing and lunging and circling over and over and over again and say, oh, that's okay. It's, it's not okay. It's not okay. This is cruelty to animals in the highest form. Yes, yes. We are not exempt from cruelty to animals just because we are animal shelters fighting against cruelty. Yeah. So this, um, you know, it's hard to watch. It's hard yep. to have to watch. And I think it really stresses out our adoptable pets. You bet. To, to, to watch um, this and to hear her barking. And, it's so um, unfair to her, to everyone. It's so cruel. Yeah. Oh. So this is her with uh, the fake dog. This is precious. This is precious, yeah. Man. <laughs> and the last time, like she was surrendered, what was the reason? Boy, resource guarding too. That level, do you see that level of clasping, grabbing? So you've got, and, and this is the uh, topic of my webinar next Saturday, um, like assessments with dogs and the combination of low threshold dog to dog aggression with low threshold resource guarding. It's the formula for this. And this is how people get bitten trying to save their own dogs. Oh, yeah. um, and this dog will let go of a dog or maybe they've already killed the, the uh, person's pet and they will turn on, um, they'll turn on the person fighting them. And again, they're, oh. Yeah. So think... she was surrendered, but do, um, I know she was in and out of shelters. 
She was surrendered uh, one time a few years ago to a different animal shelter because of an eviction. She sat okay. in that animal shelter for over six months, and then the owners came back for her, and they waived her fees wow. and stuff and let her the owners take her back. And then a few years later, they surrendered her to our shelter because they said that they were evicted, um, and she has sat at our shelter, you know, ever since for for a year or two. Um, and she is severely uh, dog aggressive. She also, in more recent times, if somebody goes to greet her and you go to stick your hand out, she snarls and takes a shot at your hand. So um, one thing that the people, you know, we had, a, we had some backlash after we euthanized her. We had a yeah. protest, candlelight vigil, all this stuff. They said that she was nice in the videos that they that they've seen and, and some of them came to the shelter and hung out with her and she was so sweet and good in her videos and she's a good dog she just needs to go to a house without other animals and again like what happens when this dog gets out of their home what happens when she goes to the veterinarian and the owner walks her through the door what happens and how do you provide this dog quality of life there's no way she can ever run free um she can't go for walks and so she would be confined to somebody's home and yard. She will get loose because she will go stir crazy because it's no life for a dog. Um, and there's nothing, I'm sorry, there's no sociability. She's not sweet. The, the, the use of the word sweet to describe this dog or to describe Ruby is a misnomer. Sweet is a gentle ears back, affectionate. It's, it's a completely different. This is her at 12 or 13. <laughs> her at two. It's it's a, yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's like, oh, well, here we go. It's, a, it's the same as Ruby going after some dog with pyometra. Yeah, and there's the beeline. The head doesn't move. Oof. Oof. So there's a gun. So how do we know that she is not playing. It doesn't matter whether she's playing or not. Dogs have killed children by, pl over, by playing with arousal with no sociability. And dogs have killed other dogs. It's game. They're game bred. This is um, the, this, first of all, it's not play. Play is reciprocal. Um, but second of all, it doesn't matter the, what she's showing, her motor patterns, all of her behaviors are to kill. <laughs> yeah. And if she's doing that because she's not doing it out of anger, um, she's not doing it because the other dog tried to you know, tell her who's boss. She's not doing it because another dog gave her some message. It doesn't matter. It's, um, these dogs do not belong in our communities. And I'm telling you, um, when shelters place these dogs or send them to rescue and they get loose and they hurt somebody else's dog or a person, um, the liability is emotional liability, financial liability. It's so irresponsible. It, it, um, it's got to stop. This is like all in the name of, um, uh, it, this is a complete lack of knowledge of normal dog behavior and a complete lack of knowledge of the limitations of behavior modification and of dog training because yeah. you know um and so I, I feel like everyone at a at an animal shelter or at a rescue or anyone who's volunteering should be knowledgeable about the limitations of behavior modification and sit in on behavior sessions with a variety of different trainers who would say you know, would say like, at best, um, we would manage, you can't ever take this out of this dog. And, um, and you know, management isn't without, without um, event. They would understand that it isn't just about love or the house with no other animals. Yeah. Ugh. No, and it doesn't seem like the people that are doing this want to learn more about behavior. They don't seem right. to try it's to 
go to any conferences, take any continuing education. Right. Um, one of the common things they like to say about me personally is that I'm afraid of these dogs, that I'm fearful of dogs, and that is why. Right. And have have I acted fearfully in any of my videos? I mean, no, and I, you should be. And it doesn't matter. the The first person that this dog is going to meet on the street out in public is going to be afraid of the dog. So yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You should be afraid of these dogs. These dogs are predators. These dogs are dangerous. The highest level of, of aggression and risk. So how um, I explain it sometimes is I say that I'm not afraid of cars, but I wouldn't go laying down in the middle of the yes, highway. Right. And it's right. the same with these dogs. Like um, when, I'm, when I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm confident that I'm not going to get hurt. Right. I but get it. I wasn't confident that I wasn't going to get hurt, then I wouldn't do that thing. And everybody makes right. mistakes from time to time. But um, right. to me, it has nothing to do with being fearful. Like I'm not right. fearful of a tiger at the zoo because I'm not going to be going in there because I know what right. they're about. And it's the same right. with dogs. So this dog actually, I saw something. Uh, he's um, a very small-ish pit bull, male, intact. He was confiscated from a... Um, squatter house and they had drugs and guns and oh, he had to okay. be catch pulled. He flipped out when they did use the catch pole on him and he broke one of his teeth. Um, oh. And then he was very nervous of the animal control officer who catch pulled him, who's really nice. Um, and it took us about a week to become friends with him, marginally friends with him, where I could safely get him out of the cage and walk yep. in and hang out with him. Um, and then it came time to evaluate him and I wanted to do the resource guarding test first because I felt like it was going to be uh, very dangerous because yes. of his mannerisms and how he acted. Yep. Um, that's, um, that's recommended. You can yeah. skip to resource guarding because you can do it with not your own hand. So it's a safer part of the test. And he actually resource guards in his cage too, which uh -huh. I didn't know um, because I don't feed them. And, now we don't even feed them from bowls, it's all enrichment, but he was eating from a bowl. Um, so, I mean, we wouldn't even have had to do this test technically because this dog guards his dish severely in his cage, um, but yeah. this is his <laughs> resource guarding test. There. Here we go, very good. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the earlier in the sequence that a dog hits an, an aggression threshold, the more dangerous, holy crap. More dangerous the dog. Wow. And there was a grab bite head shake. I mean, these are damaging hospitalizing bites. And he hit his threshold right off. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's really intense when he does it. He actually shocked me with his intensity. You could hear when I'm talking that I'm yeah. shocked. And I keep yeah. rambling on because I'm really <laughs> Yikes, he's really intense. So is this a dog that, you know, I should have tried to rehabilitate? No, no, you can't change these aggression thresholds. This isn't a food bowl issue. This is a resource guarding, a guarding issue. This is a guard dog. And here's the thing, you neuter him, his appetite goes up. Now he's worse if that is even possible. No, this level of resource guarding is... So serious, and that dog, no sociability to humans. These are really dangerous combinations. These are not, oh, these are not pet dogs. So, this, so dangerous. This dog was found uh, by a police officer running loose in a neighborhood. He is a huge, he looks like a huge field bred chocolate lab in yep. male. He shows many, many red flag behaviors. Yeah. Rather than do the whole assessment, I just did decided to do yeah. resource guarding. And this was early in when I started working there. So the staff was still learning how to do a good video. Um, so it's okay. not great, uh, but it's intense. Um, and okay. we believe that this dog was never even in a home because of his behaviors. I think he came up with a rescue because we have thousands of dogs coming mm. up with rescue yeah. transports. Um, it's a really big um, thing here on Long Island. I think he came up with a rescue and they realized he was a problem and let him run loose. Um, yeah. There's no way that this dog was living in a home and never had an incident because he's not a young male either, you know? Um, right. So here he goes. Can I have it? Two. Can I have it? Great. Good boy. 
see his face. Yikes. Oh, so, yeah, yikes. Yeah, he ripped, you know, the Sessahan apart. And then he picked up, he picked up, oh, get back here, you. Okay. Then he picked up the Assessa hand. Oh. Then we, we couldn't get the part of the hand away uh, from him. Can we have it? Oh. Wow. He sounds like a lion. So guarding edible and non-edible, like the Assessa hand is a non-edible, um, is a predictor of much more serious resource guarding. And it's predictive of, of absolutely not being able to manage the dog in a home situation because the dogs will guard, he will guard everything. And his level is really serious and he has no sociability to people and. And he lifted a leg there and then on the corner after. Yeah. Yeah. We did not, yeah. we just, we were able to get him out when he calmed down. Yeah. Have to yep. catch pull him. And um, is he up for adoption? He was euthanized. Okay, good. So once the euthanasia ban was lifted, we were able to euthanize several of the dogs that were mm -hmm. um, the worst cases. And then uh, he was, yeah, he was one of them because he was clear cut uh, not yes. adopted. Oh my God, yeah. And yeah, he also was so frantic in the kennel that he was making the other dogs so oh. stressed because he was constantly barking and pacing, barking and pacing, and slamming against the walls. Um, oh my God. I mean, so that's torture for our other animals, as yep. well as stray dogs. I would not want my pet in a in a kennel no. row with this kind of dog. I mean, that no. could, I think that that could traumatize a gentle, you know, regular yeah. dog. So that's not Absolutely. fair. No. Uh, oh, so I have one other dog. Up oh, there. Okay, so it starts here. Um, his name is Dexter, and he's lived at the shelter for two years. He's been in two different homes, and we'll talk about what happened in his two different homes. We just did the sociability portion of the assessment. Okay. Um, today. Um, okay. I'll take a look. So he's a three-year-old male pit bull mix, neutered. You know, at eight months to a year. Lived in the shelter. Oops. For two years. Okay. Got stereotypes as well. So he does do repetitive spinning and he is on Prozac. Yeah, okay. Um, he's on 60 milligrams of Prozac, but he, I mean, I'll tell you, he had been adopted and he was returned um, a few days ago and the adopter adopted him and then immediately dropped his Prozac from like 60 to 10 uh, oh. against what we told him to do. So Previous to the Prozac, he was cage spinning like crazily and very cage reactive, like very yeah. unhappy. Um, yeah. Did you see any weird micro signals in this video, like his whale eye or any of the freezing? It's, um, the video is chopping. It's, it's oh. not buffering. So I only see it in chunks. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's a little better. That. There's um, some shoulder swipes, whale eye, yeah. um, and it goes right back to that stereotypical um, rebound. Yeah. Mm. So, that. This is against the wall. This is a sociability test. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
high tail stays high, anal swipe, shoulder stance. So high risk for, you know, red flag for guarding, anal, giant, giant anal swipe, giant shoulder swipe. Um, shoulder stance. He does a lot of little freezes too. Yeah. Uh, this he this dog and I, you know, have a good relationship. Yeah. He like I mean he likes me clearly. Well, he likes you as his property. Yes. So far, he's shown you no real respect or sociability. Yes. Uh, it's interesting. You can see his stereotypical motor pattern as well you know, even on you, sort of embedded in his shoulder swiping, scent marking. Yeah. Um, do you have like street strokes or sit in a chair? I do, yeah. Great. Yes, stranger oh, test too would be interesting. I, um, that's that one. That's, This is a stranger test. I know I have sit chair too, because we did all of them. So okay. I'm gonna find them while we watch this. Uh, you can come in, I guess. Good. Okay. Stand on the drainage path with your arms at your side, looking at Dexter. Now take two small steps forward. I'm, I'm a little leery about it because I. Yeah, yeah. And now crouch down just slightly and orient your body a little bit away from the Like this? And now just pull, pull, pull down. Just run out quick. Like I had him on a very tight leash so, and I had my feet braced, so there was no way he was touching. Yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. And he's done. He's met this. The man that was the shelter director that we had walk over from another building, and he's met him before, but he doesn't, he's been funny with him in the past. Yes, yeah, he doesn't really yeah. know him, like he's maybe met him twice. Um, what yeah. do you think? Oh, <laughs> your shelter director is uncomfortable with the dog, like, yes. end of test, right? I mean. It's, um, and for the, for good reason, um, he's, this is a dog who, um, with hesitant communication will show aggression and, uh, the world is filled with hesitant communication. Um, have you, did you find his other sociability test? Yes. I just found it. I'm going to airdrop it to you. So, I have one interesting one on here uh, before we look at that one. Uh, this person he likes, and we had her come in as the stranger originally, and then we're like, we need a real stranger. Yeah. So we got our uh, real stranger. Who is it? Come in. No. Yeah, you can come in. You can come in. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the chair. He likes her, and she walks in. It's He's all shoulder swiping you. It's all like white to the eyes. Um, he's doing some guarding behaviors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Even though he like he does, you know that woman um, who's our our deputy uh, commissioner and who uh, heavily works at the animal shelter. She would take him on walks alone and get yeah. him in the cage. Like he's he's fine. The only thing he's ever done towards her is he tried to redirect towards her one time when he went to to take a lunge at a man. But other than that, never done anything to any of us, the women at the shelter. But, and that is resource guarding. So that's when you get a redirect. But he, so he was going after a man? Yes. End, end of test, yeah. end of evaluation. Uh, you know, I mean, I hate to be flip about it, but it's like, what, what are we doing in, in the shelter world today, right? Like, what are we putting out on, into our communities? Um, this is a, it, he's not a beagle. He's a giant, muscular, athletic, um, 
dog capable of great damage. Yeah. And uh, he's not as strong as Ruby, but he's pretty strong regardless. Right. That's okay. right. Let's get the leash. Gather up leash as you sit so that the dog approaches you. Still have no tension or slack. All shoulders swiping. He keeps his tail up. Yeah. None of this is sociability. 20 seconds of affection. Hi, Dex. What are you doing? Hey, buddy. Hi, Dex. Even that. Here's your boy. Here's your boy. Shoulder stance. Uh, it predicts yes. aggression to strangers, territorial aggression in the home. Um, if there's another dog in the home, it predicts dog to dog aggression because of the dog's owner guarding. Boy. He's a guard dog. <laughs> yes. Not a pet. Oh, that's that's a stranger that, test. I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this dog, um, we adopted out once to a home yeah. with a Maltese before I was around. Okay. And they returned him because he was too hyperactive and too much in the home. Okay. And then he also went recently and was adopted out to a single adult man and that man took him pulled him off his prozac he was in the home for three weeks pulled him off the prozac almost completely and then decided to take him to the dog park he oh, yeah. he did fine at the dog park a few times played very nicely then attacked an adult female boxer causing a laceration in her side it oh. didn't I don't think they stitched it, but it had to be drained and cleaned and she needed antibiotics. So she had like a $300 vet bill. Oh and then he went after somebody um, coming into the home that stuck their hand in his face oh. and hit them on the finger. Um, and we called that person and he had broken skin and injured him, but not uh, to the point that he needed stitches. Right. And then he also was taken to an off-leash dog park when no dogs were there in a fenced-in area and a town employee went to come in that area to change the garbage can or something and he attacked them. Did not bite them, but had to be tackled and forcibly restrained. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, you know, when you look at this dog, he was put in situations to, that would set him up for failure, but- They're all situations normal situations. Dogs in. Yeah. That's people, people, I mean, first of all, if you live in suburbia, how do you exercise a dog aerobically besides a leash walk unless it's a fenced in dog park or, right? Like that's a dog's only option yes. for getting out and running loose. He can't do that. He can't, so he's a resource guarder. So he um, is gonna attack other dogs if they come too close or you know, whatever he decides. He's aggressive to strangers. He's bitten um, and people are, you know, uh, people are are doing what they want, what you should be able to do with a dog in today's world. Yes, it's harder to be a dog today than ever before, but you should be able to take your dog to a dog park. Then he said, well, let me take him to a dog park when there's no one there. And a man shows up. And again, like, uh, it's, um, it, you know, what if he had killed the, the town employee? What if he had just knocked him down and the guy had hit his head? Um, these are life-changing events. Yes. And, um, and, yeah, not to mention, um, you know, now this man may not get another dog from an animal shelter after this experience. Right. He did know that the dog had issues. There's full disclosure. We give everything to the owner. People but don't people understand understand what, yeah. what we're telling them. They can't you know, we can categorize it as trainers. We know exactly what it's like, what situations will trigger the dog, what situations they absolutely can just never be in. But the general public has no idea. That's yeah, the, pa the paradox, right? Like dogs like that, we want to place them where like full disclosure, we tell everyone, you know, they've got to continue the behavior modification. They got to do this. And people will, yes, yes, yes. But the only people really qualified to take a dog like that is somebody who lived with a dog that had that level of aggression. And anyone who's already lived with a dog with that level of aggression will say no thanks to their next dog having the same issues. So that's the paradox. And once you realize that, 
you realize that all we're doing is duping somebody into adopting a dog because they don't truly understand. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, and also, you know, it doesn't feel good. I mean, for me anyway, to give somebody a dog like that, knowing right. the impact that it will have on their, yeah. their life. Um, I'm and on the boxer's life and everyone at the dog park and, you know, so oh, God. a couple more minutes, I have this other dog. Um, his name is Teddy. He lived in the animal shelter for over a year. He's an adult male, Cane Corso. He had to, he was running loose with a female dog and uh, they had to be captured with multiple police officers, multiple police cars, multiple animal control officers. And it was like, it took hours. It was very hard to capture and very aggressive. Um, and due to the euthanasia ban, uh, he sat in the shelter for a very long time and he did not get out of his cage one time from the time that he was placed in the oh, cage God. to the time oh, that he God. was euthanized. And oh, my God. the argument with the people who wanted him to be uh, adopted out was that he should be worked with and taken out of the cage. And that, um, you know, if we didn't want to take him out of the cage, they could have, they know trainers that would be willing to take him out to work with him because he could be rehabilitated. Um, and so this was a dog that I felt like taking out of the cage puts staff and the general yes. public at extreme risk because of his behaviors. and. His thing um, was that he liked certain people and hated everybody else, like really wanted right. to go after anybody else that wasn't his chosen uh, right. people. Um, and then can you imagine the heartbreak if you, how much somebody will fall in love with him because he'll have the one person, Cana Corsos are like that. You know, they're affectionate to the one person and then they guard that person. And so the heartbreak, when it doesn't work out, when a dog like this bites someone and you lose your homeowner's insurance, it's so unfair. Yeah. If they even are covered with your homeowner's insurance. Right. Boy. So he's, he's big. Uh, and this is because somebody he doesn't like is actually walking around and he can hear their voice. Oh. Can you pick up that bag? And oh, my God. He's in the cage. I know. Oh my god. Hey, Teddy. 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 All right, that's good. He's and he's interesting too because he never really showed any sign that he would ever redirect on me. But like how can I take a dog out of the take a dog out, even if that dog loves me, if he does that towards certain people that have made every effort to feed him no. every day, that <laughs> feed him treats, throw him hot dog, and he still fixates on them like that. You know? Hi, Teddy! So that's him with me. Teddy, Teddy! Aw, you nice Gia. Hi, Teddy! All right, here we go. Hi, Catherine, how are you? Oh, <laughs> Oof. Uh, oof. Oh so that's what it's like. Oops. He's very loud. That's what it's like for that staff member to try to clean his kennel every single day, three to four times a day. That's abusive to the staff person. And he's broken many of his teeth fighting the bars. And oh my gosh. Um, so I'll show you another video of him too. This is just him trying to get under the guillotine. But he actually learned how to get under the guillotine door and almost oh got his um, Oh wow. I think this might show it. Hey! <clears throat> God. Oh my God. Jesus. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. 
To keep it. Oh, so we're yelling at each other because I'm like, why do you keep putting the guillotine door up? I thought that they were pulling it. He's hitting it with so much force that it looks yeah. like the bully is doing it. Because what you have here is a predator, a beast. He's not a dog. And your kennels are set up to house dogs. And he is no longer a dog. Yes. You're, you know, and um, th there's no one who could look at that video and and think that that's not abject cruelty to animals. Like that, that's got to stop. Like the dog's not fit for this world. And I think what your the all the people who are the you know animal activists or people who are opposed to what's going on or want to spare these dogs from euthanasia, they need to redirect their efforts and they need to go into the community and work with the community to get these dogs from being born in the first place. Because once these dogs are born, they're not trainable, they're not rehabable. And, you know, and then everyone falls in love with them, or some people do. But they need to do more community outreach, provide toys, provide, you know, um, help get this, this, that Cana Corso's parents sterilized so that they don't have, so you're not breeding guard dogs, adults with no sociability. And, you know, I mean, I, I know, I know I'm saying it so that just that it's verbally out loud, but um, once these dogs end up in the facility um, and they're that type of dog, the non-sociable, all oh, so aggressive, you know, there is not a place on the planet for them. And if we can't tolerate or can't accept euthanasia, then we need to leave the shelter, go into the community and stop the dogs from being bred in the first place. Um, because that then needs to stop. We're too far downstream waiting for them to be born and arrive. There is nothing adoptable about these dogs. These dogs are absolutely dangerous. If um, I found out that they were placed in my community and I met one of these dogs or it harmed me or what, my friends or my, my own pets, or I would, I'd be incensed, outraged. It's, um, it's so irresponsible. It is not, we are not um, just about boutique adoptions and um, finding ways to lower euthanasia rates. We are about public safety. We are about humane conditions for dogs. A kennel is not a humane place for a dog. The fact that these dogs have been living there for a year, the fact that that dog, I, I don't care how aggressive he is, no dog deserves to be in a kennel for a year without ever coming out. And you can't get him out. He's too aggressive. He's going to kill one of your employees. And if he can open the guillotine, somebody's going to go in there to clean, you're going to find them dead. And it will be the most horrible death. And yes. And I'll tell you, you know, if they call me as an expert witness, you, you know, this is got to stop. Yeah. I know you know all these things. I'm not trying, I don't mean to come across like I'm yelling at you, but I'm completely passionate about this. These dogs are so dangerous. They, it, 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 it you know, they're not, they're dangerous even to have in your facility. Yes. Especially I, that Teddy. I, I mean, one thing uh, that the supervisor and I had discussed that really resonated with him was, I, I said to him, you know, if I take this dog out, this dog does really like me. I don't think that that dog would, uh, whoops, oh no. I don't think that that dog would, um, you know, turn on me. Like I, I have never seen him do anything aggressively towards me. Even when I've stuck my hand near him and he's going after somebody else, not even a yeah. in my direction. But if I was to be walking him and I round a corner and there's a staff member there, I won't be able to protect them. Right. If he does decide to start attacking me for whatever reason, there is yes. nobody there that would be able to come in and save me. That's right. The dog does not like anybody else. Right. Who who would who would help me? That's what I said to him. Who would help me? There's nobody, and no. it's just not it's just not fair. Um, no. I mean, and it's not because we're afraid of that dog that we don't want to take him out of the cage, and so that was the. That like was you should the, be afraid of the dog, right? Like that's an okay thing. The dog is absolutely menacing. He's he's a savage, and he's really dangerous. Yes. 
he's got all the hallmarks of a dog who can kill an adult human, let alone dogs and children. So their argument was he should be worked with for one, two to three years, and then a decision is made after one, two or three years of working with him to make sure that he's truly aggressive. Can't you tell from even just watching a few minutes of video clips that the dog has a real problem and is unsafe? I can see it in the first few seconds. Like it, it's, it's completely obvious. There's not a behaviorist out there who would look at that dog and say, yeah, we can, we can train him. There'd be charlatans who would put a shock collar on him and suppress him. And the minute that shock collar came off, just like, um, I think his name was, what was his name in Virginia? The dog that started in some shelter in New York City, same yeah. aggression. An AC and, dog and killed yeah. him. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's a major lawsuit because it, th these dogs don't get rehabilitated. They, they, you could suppress them for a certain amount of time using methods that are considered cruel and inhumane. Not to mention that, that the life that they lead while they're being trained for, it's absurd to think that in two to three, that you would hold a dog in a kennel for two to three years for training. Like, first of all, that's just, it's just um, cockamamie. It's, it's such, an, it's such a, a disconnect from reality and animal behavior and learning theory um, and, you know, just sh raw emotion. And um, it's, it's just utter craziness. Yeah. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. And in what world is keeping that dog in the kennel for another two to three years, even if you are making progress, which again, he'll never be safe. In what world is that humane to a dog who can, who lives in the moment? Um, he can't say to himself, you know what? In three years, I'm going to be trained. No more aggression, which is not true. Um, he can't, he only knows the suffering he feels every single day. It's abject, outright cruelty to animals. Yes, I agree. And it's so hard because you're the one that's being, I'm the one being called murderer. I'm that's the right. one being called animal abuser. That's right. Um, I've been a vegetarian for like 20 something years. And one of them was yelling at me, don't you believe in the sanctity of life? And I said, I've been a vegetarian for like 20 something years. I mean, I like animals yeah. a lot. And she said, what does that have to do with anything? Oh yeah, oh wow. Just an obsession with keeping these dogs alive and I don't understand the obsession. And it's so hard because um, we, like you and I, see that Precious is suffering, Ruby is suffering, yes. Teddy is suffering, but they, I don't think they look at it and they see that these animals are in misery. Right. Like, right. Uh, and, and putting them in a, in a home environment, there is no home that wants them. And when they do go to a home like Dexter, and we placed that dog Dexter, who was on the Prozac, um, because he he was, you know, marginal. Right. But young, you know, doing better, never did any, never did a bite. Right. Gave a lot of warning, maybe he would be okay. But if even a dog that's marginal like him cannot yeah. be successful in a home. What about a dog that's, how can right. a dog that is clear cut? Right. And how many homes are you going to go through? You know, we, we, we think of these returns as being, we, we, you know, casual, but it's like, no, the guy who had him is I'm sure devastated. The people who had the Maltese who returned him, I'm sure they're devastated. And, and we don't ever take into account what they go through. And, you know, they're, they all, if you're a behaviorist and you see these people as, as clients, they blame themselves. They do not blame the shelter, which you're lucky because they could sue the pants off. I don't know how they would do that, but anyway, um, it, it's an emotional tragedy. It's a cruelty to the people who are adopting. It's, it's cruelty to the people in the community. It's not public safety. And the lives that these dogs are subjected to is, is cruelty on, the, on a grand scale. Yes. Breaks my heart. Yeah, I agree. And, um, yeah. you know, I do care about all of the dogs at the shelter. So it's very upsetting to think of, you know, Precious or Ruby going and sitting in a cage for the next 10 years. Right. And, like, or somebody else taking care of them who doesn't love them, doesn't yeah. even know them, right? Just for the sake of keeping them alive. And uh, the some of the facilities that were interested in them, possibly all of them are punishment, heavy, heavy punishment oh. training. 
like to torture a mentally ill because it is the mentally disturbed absolutely to torture them with uh compul like heavy compulsion based training no matter what you believe in it's like we're talking heavy correction right all suppression all punishment yeah. and why or not all but mostly punishment and and then the truth is they're not they're not going to get as much interaction as they would at our animal shelter right like, our animal shelter it has indoor outdoor runs yeah it's a beautiful facility just yeah. from the videos really staff, it's impressive you have grass i mean it's it's yeah. okay our facility and these facilities and our dog a dog like precious and ruby still cannot be happy right so how could they be happier in a worse situation and then to say that the, the thing that scares me is the thought of them going to a home yeah or going to my neighborhood yeah they could Anyone's share neighborhood. A fence with me. they would rip a dog under a fence rip a person or a dog through a fence it's not right no it's not so so you would agree that precious the um little older pit bull Ruby, the big red pit bull, Teddy, the big corso. Kind of corso, all yeah. Clearly not There's adoptable. Nothing adoptable. No, this is not, they are not borderline gray area dogs. These are in the dangerous category. Dangerous category, meaning the dog's temperament is such that no matter who the person, in what environment, the dog is unlikely to be successful. And yes. lack of success means somebody's going to get mauled or killed or somebody's best friend is going to get mauled or killed. Yes. Um, now the, the one thing that they, that has been harped on that I forgot to ask, they say that the dog must know that that stuffed animal is a fake thing because dogs have like an amazing sense of smell and clearly right. she doesn't think that that dog right. is real, but what would you say to that argument? Um, well, I get that. I hear that all the time. So first of all, we use dolls in testing because we can't use real children and real dogs because the dogs that we're testing, like you've shown me today, these are not pet dogs. These aren't dogs who are going to growl or curl their lip. If they're going to show aggression, many, if not most of the dogs, at least that you showed me, are going to kill, maul and kill. And, um, and so we, we can't. So we use silhouette dolls, we use representatives. They have been validated um, in most of the studies. And, um, and the thing about dogs is they have a great sense of smell, but they're as visual as we are. They use silhouette gestures and shapes um, as much as we do to recognize familiar people. And so they do work. Um, and, um, I have on my dog to dog assessing dog to dog interactions, I show dogs interacting in a friendly way and an aggressive way with the stuffed doll. And the motor patterns are exactly the same as when they meet a live dog. These are only, these are not the killer dogs because as you said, you can't do that. Um, but it's what we use. It's, we do our best yes. to ask questions of these dogs for community safety, for best placement, we ask these questions of these dogs so that we know when they are workable, when we can medicate them and give them a chance and give, do all behavior modification. Can we find them home? And, um, you know, would it be ideal to use people's beloved pets and their children and their newborn babies? Yeah, that would be more realistic. Can't be done. I haven't been able to find anybody that'll put a kid out, like, even through a fence. Um, it's and it's not it's horrible and it's oh it's just you can't do it oh my god just like you can't do it to a real dog well i feel like when we did the um through a fence and muzzle test with uh ruby and the ruby. dogs if it was any other staff member or trainer right. than like me or a select few it would have yes. been messed up and it would have been a horrible situation yeah it's and i know from other shelters that dogs and cats who've been killed in the name of testing should never happen Yes. You know, and, 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 and people like you, behaviorists, are being forced to do more and more assessments because nobody will, um, you know, people are like, well, what if they just think it's a toy? And you're being forced to put people at risk and animals at risk to prove to somebody who doesn't know dog behavior. I mean, that's where they hired you, for a dog behaviorist, and a really good one. Um, so, yeah. Ugh.
Yeah. Well, this is really helpful. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll say on record. Set of eyes. Um, yeah. And your assessments are excellent. Your procedures are really good. Your handling is superb. Oh, thank you. Mm. So I yeah. work really hard. Um, you know, and I, I want to, you know, keep everybody safe and I can't, yes. um, I don't know. I can't fold to pressure from people who don't know what they're doing, trying right. to do the wrong thing because we know, we know that it is wrong. What they, yeah, it is what they want. Um, yeah. yeah, it's wrong for the animals themselves and it's wrong for the community Yes, or somebody else's community. Right. It's wrong for so. all involved, yep. including that particular animal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and to watch, you know, Teddy and some of the other dogs sit for that amount of time is just, ha it's Awful. horrible. You do the best you can for them, but they're not yeah. even mentally happy, even with the best no, that you can you can't. for them. It's a, it's an environment not meant to house dogs for long, long term. You know, it's... Um, so...